bond. Now, under sorry, under financial liability at amortized cost, I will only look at this one and leave out this one. I mean, they they follow the same principle as we did in the in the previous session last week. Um, what did we say about financial asset at amortized cost? What are some of the principles? Whatever comes to mind, please tell me quickly because I don't we don't have time. We've said this financial asset at amortized cost. What are some of the recognition criteria that you will remember? Emmanuel. Anything that comes to mind that you remember last week? Are you here or we should close and go home? I'm even tired already. We should we close and go home? Yes, Victoria. So the holder is entitled to regular cash inflows. So we use the effective interest rate to discount the financing. Okay, so you've said two things. The holder of this bond, so in this case, I'm turning it to be a liability. Yeah. So the holder of this bond will be required to deliver periodic cash outflows at specific dates. Yeah. And again, also with financial liability at amortized we value the instrument using the effective interest rate as you said what are some of the other things that you could remember <laughs> now okay so what do you remember we did last week Yes, Sammy, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I remember we said um, with um, with this with that class, the instrument, there, there is an assurance of specific date of payment, the principal and interest. Okay, so that also buttresses the point A. There is a specific payment of principal and interest test, which will be obliged on the debt holder. Okay. What are the last things? Hello, sir. Yep. Okay. We also said that with the amortized cost, we have the transaction cost uh, to the cost of the investment. Beautiful. So with financial liability at amortized cost is the other way around. We less the transaction cost from your from the initial lending amount borrowed amount okay. so that is also the other way around so basically that is what we mean by the financial liabilities are the principle that underpins financial liability at an amortized cost so to call so mm -hmm. i will just run you too quickly on the, one of the questions and then i can leave you follow the same principle and again also if you look at the of course these are the recognition criteria that randy how are you these are the recognition criteria that and the pins this instrument. So this is financial liability at an amortized cost. The general rules are the same as the four we have dealt with here. I want us to look at a typical question where the effective interest rate is not given in the question. Now, ABC Limited issued a bond. Now, if you issued a bond, it means that, yes, sir, go ahead, sir, go ahead. You can see your screen. Oh, you can see my screen. Yes, please. 
I can see it. Though. Oh, um, I can see it. That thing is always from your side. Then it's from your side, though. You made me stop sharing my screen, rather. Oh. Yeah, so you might check from your side. Okay, yeah. But I, of course, I'm sharing again, maybe when, um, for whatever reason, it might come. If you have internet switch off, that's what happened. So, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I have seen uh, somewhere, that's why. Okay. You are using a very sophisticated machine. Okay, so ABC Limited issued a bond for some 476,304 on 3rd January 2008. No interest is payable on the bond, but it will be held and redeemed on 3rd December 2010 for 600,000. So now one of the things you need to appreciate here is that this is the initial amount ABC is seeking to borrow. I mean, if ABC issued a bond, it means that people will come and buy and give ABC money. So that that be, this is the borrowed amount, and it was on 1st January 2008. This should prick you about your initial recognition. Now, no interest is payable on the bond. When you say no interest is payable on the bond, it means that the actual interest paid, last week we were dealing with financial assets, so we were talking about actual interest received. But when we talk about actual interest paid, it will be zero. Obviously, it's a no interest bond. But it will be held and redeemed on 31st December 2010 for 600,000. I guess this is redeemed on a premium. But of course, the premium was not, the figure had been given to you directly, so you don't need to bother about the figure. The bond, that these are one of some of the tricks. The bond has not been designated for fair value through profit or loss account. Now, what it means is that the bond, the bond is not, you see, if, if you come to my extension, there are two, there are two, and the financial liabilities, they are just two instruments. There are just two ways of valuing them. So if the bond has not been designated by this, then obviously it is designated to value with using the financial liability at an amortized, amortized cost. Now, required, calculate the charge to income statement for the year ended. It's 1st December 2008, 2009, 2010, and the balance outstanding for 2008, 2009. Now, one of the things you will appreciate here is that the effective interest rate is not given. So, welcome. Randy, come. Randy, you to. Hey, how are you? Randy, hey. Look at him. Your boss is calling you. I guess. Hey, you're talking to me. Go and talk to you. Oh, I'm going to get that. Yeah, that's it. Okay, go and talk to you. Go and talk to you. Go and talk to you. Sorry, guys. So this this is so, hey, somebody was coming. He's gone. <laughs> so where did I get to? Okay. So I've 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 seemed to lo lose my thoughts. Okay. So now that, so that that comes to. So this is a question, and you will appreciate that in this question, the effective interest rate is not given. It's not given. So when it is not given, how then do we work it out? And uh, how then do we work it out? Okay, so how then do we work things out? Now, in this question, you will remember that when the effective interest rate is not given, you apply a formula which is the nth root, the nth root. This is not n times root, it's the n root. The n must sit in the root of the amount to be redeemed. 
Opa. Amount borrowed. Depending on if it is a financial asset, amount invested. There's a, there's a financial asset, there's a financial liability. So amount basically borrowed. Okay. All minus one. All minus one, obviously. All minus one. So from this question, let's try to work out the effective interest rate. This is how many years is this instrument traveling for from February 2008 to 2010, December? That's three years. So, cube root, cube root, I guess cube root, I guess cube root. How much? What is the amount to be redeemed? 600,000 over 476,000 borrowed. So we are we, we, we will pay six hundred thousand four seventy six three hundred thousand All minus one. All minus one. Okay. So what is the somebody should quickly do six hundred thousand over four seventy six thousand three hundred for us? What do we have? One point two five nine. So one point two six. 1.26. Yes, sir. Good morning, though. Good morning. 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 Please, can somebody work out the cube roots of this for us? The cube roots of 1.26, what do we have? Hello. Um, yes, go ahead. 3.37. What did you get? 3.37. It's wrong. Please. I'm saying, I'm not saying. Please. I am not getting the formula correct. The guy who got three point something, please. It's not square root times three. This three should have ordinarily sit in the roots. It's cube roots, please. One point was zero eight, isn't it? One point zero eight, yes. Minus one. So what do we have? That is zero point zero eight. Zero point zero eight percent. Good, 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 good. Before, so you need to work out that effective interest rate before you open up your amortization schedule. Yeah. Before you open up your amortization schedule. And that gives you the date which you already know. Opening balance, effective interest rate, we just worked out for 8%. Uh, actual interest paid, which we know is zero, and closing amount. Okay, so what is the initial recognition? This was the amount 476, 300. So on February 2008, we borrowed 476, 300. Were there transaction costs? No, I don't think. Okay, so if our correction, if our calculation is correct, so here will be February January two thousand nine, February January two thousand ten. If our calculation is correct, here should be the redemptive amount two hundred thousand. Now, can somebody work out eight percent of the opening balance for us, please?
I think 38,104. Actual interest is a null interest, zero interest bond. So zero. The total, what are we getting for the total, please? If I check this, I get four, zero, four, four. Uh, here will be five. There will be one. Here will be five. So, am I working with a class? Nobody is assisting me. Hey, are we together? Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. We got five hundred and fourteen thousand four hundred and four. Six five one four. Yes, please. Six five one four. This one. Uh, the closing, but the closing amount. Okay. No, okay. Work out the effective. Five is four. Yes. Work out the effective interest rate, please. Forty-one thousand. Forty-one thousand. One five two point three two. Okay, what is the total? Can somebody get the total for us? Five five five. Five 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 five. Five six point two three two. What do we have for effective interest rates? Four 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 four. Point five zero. Point five one. Okay, so that so that is what we have. And this is the schedule that should assist you to work out your JBs. What are your journal vouchers at your initial page in 2008? You debit, what do we debit? It was our initial investment, a, a borrowed amount. So you debit uh, cash is coming in. Hello, Sam. Yes. Uh, please, uh, sorry, I wanted to take you back some more. Uh, so uh, with the effective interest rate, Maybe uh, yes. in this case it is um, a financial asset. Is it the same way we are going to calculate? Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, debit, cash, or bank, and credit is a liability, so non current liability, financial bond, isn't it? Four seven six three hundred. That's your initial borrowed entry. For the thirty first December two thousand and eight, you debit interest expense in your PNL three eight comma one zero four, and you credit non current liability bond three eight comma one zero four. That's where December 2009, the debit interest expense with 41152 in the PNL, 41152, and you credit NCL bonds. Four one one five two. At the first December two thousand and ten, the debit interest expense in PNL that is four 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 four. And you credit non current liability bonds four 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 four. Okay, so basically.
Okay. So, but the question says that what entry, what are the so PNL extracts for 2008, 9, 2010, and the balance sheet extracts 2008, 2009, 2010. So we have interest expense. 38104-11152-44444. Then we have non-current liability bonds. What are the closing balance? 514404. 514,404. 2009 is 5555566. 5555 from a 5556. 2010 is 600,000. Okay. So that's how it's going to look like. Those who are copying, please fast track it so that we can attend to other pressing issues. Are there any question, guys? Good, 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 good. Okay, so we can quickly look at the... I, I've told you point blank, I won't teach the second point. I just want us to firm up on hybrid instruments. Convertible bond quickly. Um, uh, there is a question on the slides. When you get it, try and then make a sense out of it. QRS illustration eight. Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, so, with the financial um, liabilities, do we have, or is it only two metals that we have in value? Yes. That's correct. Only two methods. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But the whole financial instrument setup has a lot of methods in working at different instruments. We've, we've, we've not added hedging, we've not added impairments, and all of that. These are simplified questions that you could be tested upon. So there are basically two of them. Okay. All right. Now, um, when you get it, you can look at this question, how you can tackle it. I want us to look at hybrid instruments. Now, specifically on convertible bonds. And I was telling your class, another class yesterday, that if I am a bond bondholder and I realize that there is no incentive or motivation for holding the bonds. I will rather prefer to convert it to equity where I will be entitled to a residual benefit. You see, there is a way that you can see that the bond you are holding, the future proceeds that you are going to get, if you discount them to their present value, you are, you are, you are worse off. So for instance, if I borrow an institution with a convertible bond instrument. At this point, everybody knows what convertible bond is. This is not the time to come and teach you business finance. Uh, convertible bonds are bonds that can be converted to equity at some point in the future, or even different class of bonds in the future. Now, if I borrow 500,000, I should, I should leave, I will get my 500,000 back, which is the principal, plus some interest. So assuming that the bond is going for five years and I am earning, I'm earning 50,000 every year, 
50,000 every year, 50,000 every year. It means that for the next five years, I'm going to get 250,000 as interest. And then my principal 500,000 will come back. So 750,000. But if you discount them, because I will get my 500,000 at the end of the five years. So if I discount my 500,000 plus all the proceeds that I have to the present value, it may even be that I will get far below 500,000, everything put together. And that wisdom makes us to have an investment position that it is not wise to hold a bond instrument. Okay, so basically that's how it is. we appraise convertible bond by using the present value approach to test whether it, is, it will be more reasonable to hold the bond. If it is not, if we can at least break even, then it's more wiser to convert the bond to at some point in future to equity. Yeah. So that's one of the guiding principles why we deal with convertible bond. Okay, for one, for one, if I will allow my bond to be converted to equity, then there must be a justifiable reason why I will allow myself, why I should allow myself or my bond to be converted to equity. I'll give you one example then. I can leave the session for you to go right back to campus and attend to other pressing needs. So an entity issues 500,000 convertible bonds on 1st January 2010. Is so, so one of the things you need to know is that so number of bonds five hundred five million five thousand isn't it? Now the bonds have a five year term, so it's going for five years, and are issued at a par with the face value of hundred per bond. Bonds are issued per odd lots, and that that is hundred per bonds. I mean, I'm sure the last thing is the way we're doing cash consideration. I'm at a touch base on this. So bonds are issued per odd lot, 100. So, please come. Have you reviewed it? Yes. Yes, Uganda. Uganda. I didn't get it. That's in the code. There is the yeah, there's a project segment, 272266, 3200. 3200, that's a project segment. And this is the code, 5200, 2216. T. Please mute your mic. It will give you to give us some bad feedback. I beg you. So when these bonds, so each bond, the interest rate on the bond is five percent. Now this should tell you how much the bond. What are the periodic interest amounts that the holder will be receiving? Each bond is convertible at any time up to maturity into 100 ordinary shares. Now, when the bond are issued, the prevailing, sorry, the prevailing market interest rate for similar debt without conversion option is 7.5%. So now the 7.5% becomes the conversion rate, the, the rate to value the instrument. Okay, we don't use the interest rate to value it. The interest rate tells us the proceed that the person will be enjoying, the holder will be enjoying. At the issue date, the market price of one of those shares is 2.5 cities. Now, dividend expected. No, who, whose hand is up? This is some does somebody want to talk? Uh, Susan. Susan, please go ahead. Seven percent and not seven percent. Yeah, that's seven percent, isn't it? Yes. Okay. The dividend expected over the five-year term of the bond amount to 10 cents per share at the end of each year. There are three main approach of solving this question, but I just want you to stick to this very approach and be free. Um, now, when you have
So from this question, the principal is 5,000 bonds at 100 CDs. That gives us 500,000. So if I am the holder of this bond, I will get my principal at the end of the five years. Now the interest is 5% on the 500,000, which is how much? What is the interest? 5% on 500,000 gives us what? Twenty-five thousand. So, periodically, at the end of every year, you'll get twenty-five thousand, isn't it? Okay. Now, what? How do we value this bond to see whether it is more reasonable to convert it to equity? So, the present value, the present value of the principal in five years will be what? Will be five hundred thousand over. This was the time to come and teach you present value formula. One plus R raise the power N. Okay. Okay, so that is a formula. which is equals to 500,000 over 1.07 raised the power n, which is five years. So what are we getting to get? Can somebody do 1.07 for us? And then 1.07 raised the power five. So 500,000 divided by that. What are we getting, guys? Hello. Yes, give it to me. Uh, 356,493.09. Great. So that is what we get. So you see that. I am giving you my 500,000 now, but five, you return that principal to me in five years time. But in five years time, the now value of my 500,000 I'm giving it to you now, which I will get it in five years time, is the 356,000. And let's check the bond holder, the bond holder, but eventually it, we should break even, if everything is correct, we should break even at 500,000, okay? If we, are, if we can at least get a present value of all our future proceeds to be 500,000, then it's wrong. Then it means that we are not better of holding the debt instrument, but we should convert that debt instrument to an equity instrument. So what is the present value? What is the present value of the a uh, five years proceeds of twenty five thousand. Because it's coming periodically at seven percent. We could use an annuity formula for this. So we can apply the annuity principle of one minus one plus R. I didn't do your business mathematics with you. Oh. Over to the year ending payment of minus five years. Oh, wow. 0 .0. Oh, wow. All over R. Uh, you will remember this formula. You don't need to go through doing every year, getting the discounting factor and all of that. We can apply the annuity. Um, okay. Year and then payment for an annuity formula. So what are we getting? Um,
Uh-uh. Um. Okay. So what do we have? Um, I guess this will give us... This will be equal to... One minus one point zero seven with the power minus five. Four point zero seven. Yes. What is an annuity factor? So I've gotten four point one zero zero. Four point one zero zero. Okay, so that's an annuity factor, isn't it? So that would be twenty five thousand times four point one zero zero. What are we getting? We get um one hundred and two thousand five hundred. So what do we have for the two thousand? Five zero four. Hello, sir. Yes. Is that the total of the two? So PB of bond proceeds is what? Uh, sir, sir, I didn't get it. The PV of bond proceeds, the principal discounted plus the interest discounted. Ah, uh, okay, okay. What's four, five, eight? So you will notice that the bondholder will be worse off holding that instrument. Okay, so it means that it's not advisable to hold a bond. Because how can I invest a bond of five hundred thousand and the PV? of all my future proceeds doesn't even get me the 500,000. So the difference become a motivation of equity for this balancing figure. Okay, what is the difference? The difference of... 500,000 minus 458. 41006.91. Okay. So that is how to work out for a typical convertible bond situation. Okay. So it is not reasonable to convert it. If you want to advise investors, it is it is prudent to convert the bonds to equity at some point in the future. Okay. Are there any questions? Those who are copying, please copy quickly. Are there any questions? So, hello, sir. Yes, I'm with you. Okay, so with this one, we are trying to find out at whether when you convert the bond, you uh, to better pay off you than not converting it. Yes. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, so assuming that we checked the difference and um, the amount was higher than the principal amount, does it mean that it's an option for us to convert it into equity? If, if, they, if we did a bond, if the bond proceeds, if the bond proceeds had even been the same as 500,000, it means there's a break even. And it's an option to advise them to hold on to the bond and not to convert it. 
Oh, okay. So the key term is to hold on to it and not convert it. Yes. Please, when do you convert? You convert when the bond proceed is less than the principal amount. Okay. So from what happened? So you convert when the PV of the bond proceeds is less than the principal amount. Yes. So from what we've calculated, yes. the proceeds is less than the principal amount. So okay. we advise to convert it to equity. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very yeah, because much. if you convert it to equity, the firm will pay you are a part owner of the business. It's one of the benefits. And two, if you convert to equity, the firm will usually pay the secured uh, debt and trade creditors and all of that. And all the remaining money are for equity holders to share. And you will be part of that enjoyment. So you may get more residual interest than your 5% uh, you are enjoying every, every year. Okay. And when you convert yeah, but it's it, also risky. It, it, it's not risky. If you are holding an equity at any point in the future, you can sell off your instrument. And if the firm value has appreciated significantly, you will get more. If I buy shares for one dollar and then if I sell the, if I'm about to sell the shares in five years' time and the shares is trading at ten dollars or hundred dollars per share. I'm better off multiplying by the number of shares I'm holding. Yeah. It's, it is more reasonable value than the one dollar. Pardon? Yeah, if the if the equity holders shares, it, yes, if the instrument is less than the one dollar you bought it, then you'll be worse off. But the psychology of seeing yourself as part owner of the business is also there and and that it, 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 it even gives you a good feeling to be an owner of a good company you know. <laughs> people don't one of the things you should, you should appreciate people don't hold the instrument not necessarily because of profit everybody make an investment with a reason, like marriage, people go into marriage with a reason. Some of you here, you go into marriage not necessarily for other things, but because of what you are seeing about the lady. That's why you are going into the marriage. So people go into business and all those things for reasons. Some people might have an ideal cash, no use for it, and want to use it to dump it into a business and become part owner of the business, not necessarily for dividends. Yeah, not necessarily for dividends. When we're on the Garden Stock Exchange, we learn that dividends are enjoyed by people of old age, but they know they are coming to die. So they hold the equity instrument with the motive to gain proceeds. But if you are young and you invest in a firm and the firm is making good profits, and you have what it takes to sustain yourself. You rather have to encourage the firm to plow back the profit into the business for expansion growth into other countries and all of that. And, and that will give you more influence. Okay, so no, the motive of a young investor is not necessarily for dividend, but to ensure growth and expansion into the business that he is a part owner of. But these are complex investment areas, no, no, not anything about what we are doing. But this is how you must work it out and advise when the time gets there. Yes, are there any further questions, team? Okay. Yes, I'll go ahead. Okay. The proceed value, the PV, the PV of the, the PV of bond proceed. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I don't know how can they got that value. Ah, but it is just this one. That. Okay, give you the figure. Have you known how can we got the value? No, please. I don't know. Please, somebody should explain how you got the PV of the bond proceed to Africa. Yeah, so what 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 we did is that we added the 
the annuity, which is the 102,500 uh, 102, to the uh, present value of the principal in five years, the 356,493 to it. Uh, yeah, that's, okay. that's, what, uh, yeah, that's, that's what, what you need to get the 459. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Alfred, are you fine? Yes, I'm fine, sir. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. I guess there are no questions. Um, and everybody has copied. Guys, if there are no further questions, I wish you all the best. I will see you next week. Um, um, Chris, let's talk. I might not be still, but I might travel again. So let's talk and see if I can find a slot to have next week's session before the end of the week. If not, then I will have to um, look for a stable internet elsewhere. And and then. Okay, sir. So please, can you send a slide? The financial. You already, you already have the slides. No, we just sent no, the one we just went with. the word. My no, word. No, no, the word. You said the word you use. Hey, last week I didn't give you financial instruments light. No, please. Guys, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. It's not.